Well, hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Wild Your Garden. And in today's video, I am back for the first time in a long time in my own back garden. Now, the last time I did a video from this part of the world was back in 2020, only a few months, I think. I'm sure it was 2020. <laughs> Covid scuppered all our memories, I'm sure. Anyway, it's been at least a couple of years since I did a video on this back garden so yes you will have no doubt seen the tours in may and june that i did and i'm hoping to do some again this year um the last couple of years have been really difficult to stay on top of the garden i've actually quite shamefully let the garden go so to speak which uh hey the wildlife didn't mind it's still been absolutely teeming but i've just been working all over the country for the last couple of years so yes i haven't had a lot of time to maintain it however i've been busy so while we've been having uh, a bit of a quiet period to the start of the year. I've deliberately booked a bit of time to try and get some stuff done in the garden so I can start managing it again and bringing you guys some more practical videos as to how you can manage your own space because this little garden, well, it's not actually that little, it's quite long, but it's quite narrow, is probably typical of most gardens found throughout the UK. It's an old 1920s, or even before that, I think 1900, roughly about the turn of the century, um semi-detached house so yes it's not a huge garden but as you can see something that most of us will probably have so you can see i've been busy i've put in some dog proof fencing now having frank and luna has been wonderful however it's meant that the rest of the garden has got a little bit trash so the current wildlife pond is still there it's about five years old now but stay tuned because i'm actually going to be revamping this pond i'm going to be making it a lot bigger almost twice as big um, the meadow area around there just hasn't worked as well with the dogs it's been a real nightmare to try and maintain that and also all of the sleepers around the edge were rotting away so we've replaced all those over the last few weeks put in a new gate for access down to the rest of the garden still got my little bench seat if you remember that from the old video and yes the bottom patio is still down there housing a lot of plants from uh, a good friend of mine angela who donated a lot of plants to me um back in autumn last year i went to visit her and she's kindly given me quite a few plants that she could no longer find a home for so a lot of those are going in the garden this spring so yes been very busy full tour of the garden coming up and obviously lots more work to do however today's video is all about how to make a woodland border and it's one that i want you guys to give uh, a go at if you've got a little shady area in your garden i'm sure we've all got it and this doesn't have to be huge now if i step back the area in question excuse the empty bird food that's a bit embarrassing the sparrows go through this in about two days and i've just not quite got a chance to top it up yet however you can see here the area we're talking about is around about six meters it's six square meters three meters by two meters so not huge and in the corner i've got my magnificent buddleia where the house sparrows live and sometimes the um, collared doves or the wood pigeons nest of which I can hear wood pigeons calling away. Uh, yes, yeah, so we've got about six square meters, including the beast of a dog rose, which if you will have seen the previous videos, you will have seen goes absolutely mental in the summer, gets absolutely huge and goes up to about probably 12, 15 feet. So I've cut that right back. It's going to come back this year, but it's never sat well with me where it is it's always been you know once this grows and it establishes through the some months it kind of comes out right the way you know to sort of blocking all the view from the back of the house and it's just an enormous mass of vegetation so i've cut that right back with the view to moving it back into this corner or taking a sprig of it and putting it back in there in the autumn probably but i still want it here for the wrens use it the wrens go through it to look for spiders and various insects along with long-tailed tits as well so i'm keeping that in there for now whilst the shrubs that i'm going to be planting in here establish so we've got six square meters um this garden is north facing that way so this patch is quite shady it will get a bit of morning sun which will hit it in this direction but then in the afternoon the sun sets over there so it will be in shade for the majority of the day so let's take a look now at how we're going to make this woodland border so a little bit more about this area and what i want to try and achieve now given a little bit of the information that we've just spoken about so we've got the wildlife pond there already 
which is predominantly a frog pond, although there are newts as well. Um, there are stag beetles in this area of Essex and we've had stag beetles in the garden and I've actually seen a male flying down the street as well a couple of summers back. So I know they're in the area and I've already got some stag beetle habitat in the garden, which is some rotting logs sunk into the ground um, for them. And I know there's larvae in there, which is absolutely brilliant. And we've also got a lot of great bird habitat with the cover of this buddleia, which is where all the uh, house sparrows live during the winter months and then they come onto the feeder. They use that as a, a main hub, if you like, and in the summertime they then go off, they disperse and they nest elsewhere, obviously. Some of them in the boxes that I've put up on the house. Speaking of boxes, if you can just see that one up there is a tit box for great tits and blue tits. And I've actually today just seen the first blue tits poking their heads in and out of the hole. So really, really hopeful that they'll take to that again this year. Last year, there were a pair of great tits in that box. So really good to see, fingers crossed, there'll be another pair of birds in there this year. I'll keep you updated on that one. So, so in essence, what we've got and what I'm looking to cater for in this shady area, which a lot of you might be thinking, well, I've got a shady area, um, what can I plant in it? And in this video, as I say, I will be going through from the trees and shrubs right the way down to the smaller plants that you can put in an area like this to make it absolutely brilliant for wildlife. So I want to create habitat for frogs and newts, which we'll come on to in a little while. And also the birds, there are a lot of birds in this garden. The garden is like a kind of a mini woodland, if you like. And I get jays, we get loads of collared doves, wood pigeons, goldfinches, green finches from time to time. A lot of blackbirds, wrens, blue tits, great tits, the house sparrows, as I say, um, magpies as well sometimes. So there's a lot of bird life in this garden because of the cover, because of the trees. And I'm looking to add to that. So first and foremost, I want to provide more cover for the birds. Now that starts with the taller stuff, the trees and the shrubs, which are gonna go at the back, which as you can see, I've got a nice section of fence, which kind of goes along there, which is about, I would say from this corner, where the new dog proof, hopefully, fencing is. Although Frank did get over it to the, other, the other day, he jumped straight over this bit. So I might have to add another layer to the top of this fence. But here we've got a, a section that is about, about three, three and a half meters ish long, and it goes under the buddleia at that end. So a lot of the buddleia is dead, as you can probably make out on this end. It's a very, very old buddleia. And um, I've kept that dead vegetation for the house sparrows to use to come down so they can get right next to the feeder. Uh, but I might cut a little bit of that back just to enable us to plant further into that section. And down here, if you can just see, there's a field maple which actually started growing there on its own, which is absolutely brilliant, right under the shade of this buddleia. So really nice to see. So I'm obviously going to keep that field maple do do well in a semi shady setting. So some of the trees and shrubs that I want to put along this border are things such as a rowan. I want to get a rowan tree in there, which will probably go more kind of central in this area. But things that really do well in shade are going to be things like holly, uh, spindle. Um, Geld rose doesn't do too bad in shade as well, as does holly, uh, sorry, as does hazel. Um, and dogwood in particular is another good one. So there's four or five species there that should do pretty well. And as we get further out from the buddleia, this bit does obviously get the morning sun, as I say, and once it gets up, it should hopefully get the midday sun in the summer, which will come in from that direction down to the shrubs. So it's not the end of the world if these are going to go in and be, um, you know, not exactly shade hardy in the fullness of time. The hazel will do reasonably well as well as I say. So those are the sorts of things that I want to get in there. If you want a full comprehensive list of everything you can plant trees and shrubs wise in a border, then do get yourself a copy of the Wild Your Garden book. Obviously go onto the online shop wildyourgarden.com and every single copy sent out from there I will personally sign myself for you guys. So yes, do get one of those if you can. It's got all the information you'll need on how to build wildlife pond, wildflower meadows, herbaceous borders, what trees and shrubs to plant, um, oh, plants for shade, plants, plants for clay, plants for sand, you name it, it's in that book. So yes, a lot of years of work went into that book. So do get yourself a copy if you haven't already, but enough about the book. I'm going to pull out a few shrubs now, start spacing them out and start getting them in the ground and then we'll look at some of the features we can be adding.
Okay guys, so you can see I've now spaced the plants as I think they will work. It might change slightly as I get planting, but in essence what I've gone for, I've got this in the middle, there it is, <laughs> is a row and that's gonna go up and hopefully fill the open void above that gap, which will just fill out nicely, but hopefully then not cast too much shade onto the rest of the garden. I don't want this to get massively high, this area, because then it's going to shade out all the lights to the pond. So it's going to be managed on a regular basis. And obviously I will be doing further updates on the management of this garden as well. Hence the uh, older in the back, A-L-D-E-R, not E-L-D-E-R, which reminds me, I've got another elder to put in. I've got one elder down the bottom of the garden, elder, a cracking plant. If you haven't seen already, check out my previous video on elder. They're an amazing shrub, absolutely cater for almost anything. So I've got that to include elsewhere in the garden. I have got one of those that I dug up from the front garden, um, which is another video to come. <laughs> um, yeah, it's been a busy February. So yes, I've got all of those spaced out now. The older A-L-D-E-R is very, very good for uh, things like siskins and uh, a lot of the, the tits as well. They love to go through alders, especially the, the older catkins are lovely. Um, so that'll be really nice. I'll keep that as a coppice. I won't let that go as an individual tree. Same as the hazel, which is in the corner there. Then I've got a couple of spindle as well. Nice, really big potted spindle in front of those. Spindle, absolutely fantastic in uh, a shady area and really, really good. Uh, it provides a lovely, lovely uh, pink and orange flower and um, seed at the end of summer, really gorgeous. And then I've got two hollies, two more hollies in here. I've got two hollies already in the garden, big hollies, which attract a really good number of holly blue butterflies. This garden is one of the best places I've ever been, funnily enough, to see holly blues. A few summers back, I had six or seven even in flight at the same time. So an amazing garden for them because I've got holly and the ivy of which they use both of over two generations. Wood pigeon wants his afternoon seed feed. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so we've got the gelder rose as well. We've got uh, one, uh, one, two, two gelder rose at the front. I've put those at the front because of their autumn color. They go absolutely gorgeous, their gelder rose in the autumn months. Their leaves go a lovely kind of yellow and red. They're just absolutely beautiful. And they have a lovely white flower in the spring and then a red berry in the autumn as well. Well, a little bit like a, um, a red currant, if you like. So I can't wait to see those when they're in full flower. I have put in little buddleia, where, where are we? Just there. Um, some of you may think that's a little bit controversial, but I'm actually all for buddleias in a garden setting. I know they can be a little bit invasive in the wider landscape, but managed well in a garden setting. There's no problem with them whatsoever. I think I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven-ish already, and they're absolutely brilliant. They are um, a provider of nectar for so many insects, so I love them. And there's one going in there against that fence that will keep, be kept low down. Uh, and I've also got, which I haven't put out yet, I'm gonna plant a little um, honeysuckle to ramble its way through that fence, a native honeysuckle. So that will just add a bit more cover and who knows in time, a bit more nesting potential for the robins in particular. I might even wedge a little robin box in there in the fullness of time. So those are all the species. Oh, and I've got the dogwood, which is there. Again, dogwood's very, very good for shade. Um, yes, and that will be a nice addition to the area as well. So all those plants I'm gonna go and put in now, and then we can look at some of the other features in which you can add in terms of the additional habitat and the kind of the more herbaceous perennials you can plant, some of the really good plants that will do well in a lot of shady conditions, which no doubt you guys are chomping at the bit here. So I'm gonna get on, get these planted, and then we'll look at the other plants we can plant and some of the additional features.
Well, this woodland border is coming along quite nicely with the aid of Frank and Luna intermittently. Um, and as you can see now, I've got the main shrubs in across the back. So I've got the buddleia in here, I've got the haze in the corner, the older, the dogwood, one of the hollies. And I'm kind of working my way out. When you're planting any border like this, it's best to start at the back and work your way out. And uh, obviously do as I have done and space all your plants out first to get an idea of quantities because um, you can always move them around when you're planting and then you will want to no doubt move them a little bit to enable you to get in to plant them. Anyway, you'll notice these two rather lovely additions, which are two old pieces of oak, which I've had lying around in the yard for oh, years and years and years. They fell out of an old oak tree along the farm track and they were cut up and I have kept them for a, a rainy day and here they are. So oak is a favoured food plant for the larvae of the stag beetle which we do get as i've already said here in essex so i'm really hoping that as these two decay underground i've sent them in uh, a fair way and then trampled around the base of them with my feet just to really compact them in so they stay nice and upright and i'm hoping here's here's the uh the, the major or the master plant shall we say there's a lot of sort of open splits in this wood where it's dried naturally in the air i'm hoping i can wedge a few peanuts in there and get some shots of some of the jays that we get visiting so <laughs> we will see on that one i'm not i'm not too hopeful but it might be nice to just give it a go but yes these two pieces i'm hoping will provide great stag beetle habitat i'm also going to add a few more um birch logs i've got a few birch logs again from some very very old works that were from a garden actually and um, yeah i'm looking to put them in uh, part of this woodland belt to create again more rotting habitat more dead wood more logs you can't have enough rotting wood in your own garden and log stacks for protection and habitat for frogs newts and everything else toads especially love them so yes i'm going to put some more in there and then concentrate on getting the front planted but it looks like the rain might be putting paid to today's efforts so yes stick around and see what else I add to this little area once I've got the planting in.
Well guys, after a lot of planting, my mini woodland border is now complete. As you can see, it's just an absolute little wonderland and I'm really, really chuffed with it. The bluebells that you can see are actually dug up from a client's garden where we have been putting in a wildlife pond. So I've transplanted some of those along with some wood anemones as well. Um, there are absolutely droves and droves of them in this garden and they're right where the pond was going. So I've transplanted those so they've got a new lease of life. Uh, we've also got plants like primrose, cowslip, red campion, red valerian, um, white campion as well I'm looking around uh, trying to remember I've got my good friend Angela who is up in Lancashire she donate, donated some plants to me last year which I've finally been able to put in things like the wood vetch you can see just there which I'm really looking forward to see coming into flower and some other plants as well down the bottom of the garden some of the shrubs went in here as well from her so huge thanks to her for that and it really is a lovely little treasure trove we've also got plants such as some betony down here Primroses, if I haven't said them already. Sweet woodruff. Wild garlic as well. I planted some of those in there. So some of the bulbs that I got for the front garden, they have now gone in here as well. So they'll come up next year. I've got some snowdrops in there as well, which obviously have now gone over, but they're right at the back. They'll come through next year. So it really is a lovely little treasure trove. I can't wait to see what comes up. Right down here in this corner, I've got some red valerian as well and a little fern next to this stump so all in all it should really be kicking off very soon so i can't wait to see how this establishes and obviously do get in touch guys if you want to know how you can plant one of these if you want to know the full plants uh, plant list or if you're looking to buy any then do get in touch with the wildyourgarden.com online shop have a look on there and yes you should be able to find all the above mentioned plants or most of them at least uh, because around this side towards the or in front of the logs i've actually transplanted as well i should say from a front garden i dug up there's a gladden there or stinking iris such an unfortunate name another one there which i've planted in front of the log pile which are going to go really nicely they love full shade they do really they're one of the best plants for full shade they are i've also got some ferns in the front of those logs as well so they should fill out really nicely provide some good cover year round um, and i should say as well guys while i'm thinking about the online shop stay tuned because we will have a whole new website launching very soon for you guys uh, we've been working on a few tweaks to get it um a wonderful user experience so yes i'm hoping to have some news on that very shortly but do stick around because yes there will be many more videos on how you can create little mini habitats like this obviously i will be doing updates i'll be doing garden tours as with the front garden as well now it's coming into fruition and today i'm very pleased to say i've had an absolute win for nature i have had the permission from the council um well not <laughs> i say permission i've had the permission from the contractors um or the ag agreement that they are not going to mow the verge outside my the front of my house so really chuffed with that so might get on and do a little bit of gorilla planting in there so let's see what turns up and also today in the front garden i've had my first red mason bee going into one of the canes in the insect hotel so really really good times at the moment so yes i hope you enjoy my little mini woodland border i hope it's given you guys some inspiration as to how you can create one of these wonderful little habitats in only a few square meters so yes any questions as always drop them in the comments below guys and thanks so much for watching and don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell then you will get notified every single time i make a video which is twice a week wednesday and a sunday at 6 p.m gmt so don't miss out there's loads of cool tips for you guys coming up and as always thanks so much for the support guys really appreciate it take care stay wild and i'll see you all very soon mm -hmm.